prepare for this shit. Let's just go. Uptown Records started with five people. Andre Harrell, I'll be sure, Heavy D, and Puffy. And Kim was the longest working employee because she was there from the very beginning. She was Andre's personal assistant. Mm. Welcome in new people. Kim is dead. Heavy D is dead. What's it? Andre Harrell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. Heavy D was found dead face down in the heart attack. Andre Harrell, heart attack. Kim died from People pneumonia. Dying around but Diddy, though. there's I mean, the first coroner's mind. report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide, and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons yeah, that Natalie, create here. heart attacks. Bob Mata sitting folks in here. Love to see it. Definitely. Bob Mata, you know, been on this show, been on this channel many times. Hell yeah, Natalie. Welcome. And pneumonia like symptoms. And. Then right after that, Al had a meeting and I was gonna meet up with him because we were in Vegas and then the next thing you know. Everybody popping in here tonight. Fuck yeah. Everybody wants to know what they all about, had. Everybody wants to know about Diddy tonight, baby. The, common, though, the survivors and the, and, and the late of Uptown Records, they were all writing tell-all books. Mm -hmm. Andre was writing a book right before he died. So again, I'm really out of the loop because I'm unfamiliar with this lady. And apparently she's been spitting this shit for years. Like somebody in the chat said 10 years. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Oh, Wrong on my bed. Kim Porter was working books. on a book before she died. And I'll be sure was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a coma. Has Puffy ever been in a coma has he has anything happened to him he must be the luckiest motherfucker because it seems like everybody that worked at uptown records from the very beginning were gone just him i guess al disappointed bro that's not even it on her hold on Hold on, there's another. Let's go a minute, minute 30 here. What does it say right here? Jag Jaguar Wright explains Diddy was working with Usher to get Justin Bieber. These people are sick. Again, this is some dialogue from random accounts. Again, I take no, no, this is all allegedly. I'm just showing you shit that's out here on X because it's fucking a wild minefield out here. And you can take what you want. You can dig deeper with what you want. Uh, I've been doing it. And there is some rabbit holes to go down that go fucking weirdly in some weird spots. I don't know, man. Like, did he even try? Like, I've been saying it on Twitter. When this shit fucking blows up, it's going to be crazy, okay? Like, that's going to be insane. Who's going to be going the fuck down? You see, again, allegedly, I'm just saying, somebody with the, that starts with the name J, all right? I'm just saying there's a lot of names being tossed around. There's a lot of people on a lot of photos. A lot of pe people have been talking about Diddy parties for a long fucking time. A lot of famous fucks, I think, are about to be coming down, all right? If he doesn't end up dead, I would be fucking surprised. Let's just be blunt about it, okay? Let's just be blunt. I'm telling you like it is, baby. Because he has some high, powerful, elite people, I'm sure, that's been surveilled inside of his homes, under surveillance, cameras in every fucking home, while they're doing some fucked up shit, whether it's with drugs or with women or with underage folks, potentially or possibly. Even for a minute. And his management was backing him off. But it wasn't until Usher took over management and had guardianship and gave temporary guardianship to the diddler for 48 hours. The diddler. Think about that. What did he call it? Was it like a puffy camp? What was it called? They call it some kind of puffy camp or some shit. What was it called? Somebody in the chat will know. He had already been to the hospital. That situation that Gene was talking about. Mm. And you still took Bieber there, but you got custody of him first. Yeah. Diddy had already tried. They wouldn't let him. Actually, someone made reference to the fact 
that Diddy trying to get at Bieber the way he was trying to get at Bieber was looking a little predatory. And Dude, then, some should... of those videos with Bieber, with Bieber is crazy. I know you guys have seen the ones, and I can look this shit up, but it's like him when he's like 15, and they're like outside of a car. He was showing him, you know, just like, oh, yeah, he's going to come and hang out with me for the week, get a couple of days. We're going to, you know, just going to show him what's up, show him the ropes. Like a few years later, there's another scene of them like in a studio situation. You can tell Bieber's a little bit older. And uh, Diddy's like, hey, you haven't been hanging around. You ain't been hanging out, man. You've been selling out arenas. What's happened? And dude, Bieber's body language, not only his body language, he's stuttering. He's like, oh, oh you know, uh, you just don't have my number. Like, he's so awkward and weird and fucking something happened, dude. Allegedly. Possibly. Discovered it and Some shits went it. down with the dude. He got custody of him and promised to look after him. And then he sent him to the diddler. Does that sound like a good guy? It's horrible. It's horrible. Does that sound like a good guy? Now that we know. What did he's really like? They're not seeing what the intentions was in his heart when he took Justin Bieber there. Oh. Let's be honest. He mm. took Justin Bieber there. Dude, dude, that clip's creepy as fuck. So right here, this is Justin, what I'm he's in, about. Have, Justin, and he's in. You ever seen the movie Forty Eight Hours? Right now, he's having Forty Eight Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Um, you know, I I, I have like he's excited. He's like, yeah. Him. You know, he yeah. signed the Usher. I'm signed to Usher. I, I I had legal guardianship of Usher when when you know he he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours. He's with me, so, um, and yeah, and, um, and, and, yeah, and, and we gonna go. I mean, who cool. fucking, in Justin Bieber's spot right here, all, everything you're seeing right now, who wouldn't be excited about this? You're like, fuck yeah, Puff right, you're 15, crazy. you're hanging out with fucking Puff Daddy, with Diddy, bro? Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 40? All right, now watch this one. Now watch this shit, bro. Don't act different, huh? Look at this shit, dude. This shit's Don't creepy act as huh? fuck, Don't act different, bro. Huh? You ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you, you never really got my number, so. Right. Okay. My number. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Tell you. Don't act different, bro. Huh? Are you fucking you know, kidding me, dude? Hanging out the way we used to hang out. We need a, a well, body, yeah. someone that knows body you language on here. Contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But. You, you never really got my number, so. Right, okay. Number? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. You. What Don't the act different, fuck, huh? dude? Like, insane, bro. All right, let me see what else I got on here. I, I literally, I've just been collecting clips. There's a lot of wild shit in here, y'all. All right? This right here, LeBron. And uh, giving everybody a light. Man, this is an unbelievable thing, man. Like we all, hey, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. Yeah, yeah that's what's up. Yeah. Shit don't look so good. Yes, hey, everybody know ain't no party like a Diddy party, so. Yeah, yeah. that's what's up. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I know, like the last time, like the la like when he ran away, when he was getting on the plane and his drug mule got arrested. When that happened, there were some videos popping out of him with some, like, definite underage girls. Again, allegedly, it looked like an underage girl, but it's fucking creepy as shit. He's got her on a live stream, though, like an Instagram live stream. Not a care in the fucking world, because he thinks he's above it all. Like, he never thought he would get called. A year ago, what was it, like, almost a year to the day that he did get arrested? He got the fucking key to the city in New York, bro? This clip's crazy. Look at this one. This one's crazy. Popped through my feet earlier. This one's crazy. Wait till you see his reaction. Miami, a night of party, and I don't really remember what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Would you like a reminder? Yeah, sure. Play some. Play. Play. Hey, yo, play listen. Yo, I, I love it all. I love it all, man. I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, where you put my bag? Daddy, yeah, I like when you when oh, you scrambling and scraping for no, no, no. shit. Dude. That was you. Scrambling. Did you hear that? <laughs> it all, man. I like yeah. when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah. Where you put my bag Daddy, yeah, I like when you, when oh, you right scrambling right and right scraping right for no, shit. Look no, no, no. reaction. That was you. Scrambling. <laughs> <laughs> what? You said, I like when you do it like that, Daddy. <laughs> when you scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> hey, man. 
<laughs> what the fuck? Miami fuck, at night dude. of party. I don't what really the fuck, what I was man? Like, people <laughs> fucking knew. Are you kidding me? Like, deep motherfuckers knew shit. Like, right here is a bodyguard. Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal. Take it how you want. Do your own research. I'm just, I'm just kind of a messenger at this point. And I'm just honestly looking through some wild ass shit uh, on the interwebs, uh, particularly on X. Like, some dudes belong in jail based on what they do and how they do it. We know that to be true. And it's just this situation, man, um, when they get down to all the facts and all what happened, he may belong in jail, bro. And that's not my doing. That's not Cassie doing. That's his doing and his learned behavior from the people that mentored him. You got to realize, man, you got to, you, you, he learned from Andre Harrell. He learned from Russell Simmons. He learned from Clyde Davis. You understand? When those people are, 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 are telling you that they were in heavy into the drugs. Dude, and the, that's a good into, fucking point right there. You know he's got soldiers out here still lurking. And the power he's got and the money and the influence that's still going to be expandable outside of a jail cell, outside of prison when he eventually gets there. It's still going to be real. That's what's fucking scary, man. That aid, at, at that crazy stage, that's going to make him think that he could get away with the same thing that they was getting away with back then. You understand? The things that he was saying, you know, the touchy-feely between two men and all that stuff like that, man. All that, he learned that from them dudes. When I told y'all the story, when me and my man went up to Russell Simmons and he had a house and he had a, a, um, a man in bikini drawers in his bedroom, in his bed. You understand? Bro, this is that he learned. I'm, I'm assuming oh, yeah, he learned I've got a cat clip him. too. Let me put that. And I, I'm not going to say alleged because I saw that for my own self. My man was What's with up, me. Mosh? Slick was with me and we saw that for our own self. You understand what I'm saying? So these are behaviors and things that with drugs and all the stuff that's going on, pills, uh, uh, drinking, uh, it make it can make this man into a monster. And that's what it did, bro. It made him into a monster, bro. What's happening to him now is one of the greatest tragedies that we're going to ever read about, bro. This is going to be one of the greatest tragedies that Shakespeare couldn't write in Richard. He couldn't write it in Macbeth. He couldn't write this shit in homie Romeo and Juliet. This is going to be one of the greatest tragedies of hip hop, along with Pac's death along with Big's death. And he brought it on himself. Dude, crazy shit. Again, I'm just playing clips out here, you know. Let me know what y'all think. Shit's fucking actually insane. Now, here is some fucking deep conspiracy wild shit. And this clip is even crazier now. This is crazy, all right? This is fucking nuts. And we're going to go into this one again. This one goes deep. Tinfoil hat levels deep. Wild shit deep. Take it how you want. Mandatory tinfoil hat. This shit's so, wild. I've been going back to the guy that shot up the Trump Hotel back this in This story's fucking crazy. And listening to the interview he gave in the hospital before he was put in jail. And we're about to go Diddy, the rap industry, drug smuggling, but also Trump, Obama, Hillary, human trafficking, the black boule, everything. This shit is so wild, and it's gonna take multiple videos to parse out. We're talking about this guy, Jonathan Odie. And way back in 2018, before the Cassie lawsuit, before the Little Rod lawsuit, before they raided Diddy's home, before they arrested Diddy, he claimed there we go. that he was a Diddy sex going. slave you, and that he had sex with Cassie and Diddy multiple times. He claims he contracted herpes, he sued them, he won. He claims they're gonna to try to kill Trump and he's trying to warn Trump. He claims a lot of things. And some of them are just out there. But some of them have been directly corroborated by things we've Thank you, Afton. Appreciate since. that. And in this first video, we're going to dig into first what he on calls the, tonight, baby. the hip-hop agenda. But first, if you're not familiar with what happened and what this dude did to get arrested, let's watch a tape. So this is security camera footage from Trump So this National is insane Hotel in its fucking Doral, cell. Miami, like... Florida. 
and this is from back in 2018 and it's sped up and it, there's a couple places where the time stamp time lapses and I won't show you the whole thing but basically this guy Jonathan Odie walks in with a gun somewhere he's got this is it just time lapsed he's got a giant American flag he drapes it all across the counter he's pulls down the chandelier he said he shoots some rounds at the ceiling and then he basically just stands there and waits for police to come he smashes some shit for apparently no reason like just committing crimes for the sake of committing crimes apparently and then he just stands around with a gun and now the cops are outside and he's like kind of giving so up saw and this. surrendering but maybe they're not realizing it or accepting it so then he pulls out a gun starts shooting at them doesn't hit any of them as far as i'm aware he runs out of bullets or something not sure what happens exactly but at a certain point he decides it's time to book it and he runs he gets shot three times in the leg during this exchange slips dude keeps running runs up the stairs and in this upper room, he eventually is just like, eh, fuck it. And he gives up, puts the gun down, moves some furniture, lies down on the ground, and surrenders. And he's got... So, yeah, he... After this, instead of the police getting him immediately, because it was at Trump's spot and Trump is the president, the Secret Service talked to him first. Says some wild shit. The total and Dude, the shit that he says about Diddy in this, right? So, you would be thinking, oh, this guy's whacked out of his head, like, this is fucking insane... 33 minutes long and i spent like three hours last night transcribing it all and trying to figure out his voice because he's got a super weird voice and i've been digging through corroborating all the crazy things he says in this interview but one of the most interesting things is about the hip-hop agenda before we get to that let's let's do the diddy stuff because he made all these claims before anyone officially knew anything about diddy check this out do you know sean combs Puff daddy yeah p diddy whatever he calls himself yeah. he's I had sex with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would, uh, he would masturbate and tell me what to do with Cassie. I had like 15 encounters, and I heard lots of business. Because what they would do is Sean talks a lot on the, on the phone and on the TV with speaking and stuff. And I would be in the, I was like a sex slave, okay? For them, that's what I was. That's all, all right? Um, I called Herpes, and I came back, and I sued him for the Herpes, and won. Mark Gellerwals and Ben Mercedes were his attorneys, okay? And Christopher Neons here was my attorney. They asked me to turn in that, which was the video recording, and I did so. In 2018, somebody coming out and saying, I was a Diddy sex slave. I was having sex with Cassie at his request, doing drugs, and while he walked around and he was basically being a fucking cuck, and getting off, dude, you'd have been like, what the fuck? Like, no, like, that's not probably happening, right? Now we know that's like Diddy's M.O. at his fucking house at these freak parties. Like, exactly what this crazy motherfucker that shut up a Trump hotel just said. What the fuck, dude? He just named, there's all kinds of dirt down that rabbit hole, but that's for another video. But when you watch the interview, you can tell that the investigators are like, this guy's fucking schizophrenic. What the hell is he talking about? And he like keeps on trying to like redirect him without making him feel defensive as though they don't believe him. But now we know that what he said about Diddy was 100% on point. Like in a way that you could only know if you actually were a Diddy sex slave. Because if you don't know, Diddy liked to pay sex workers to have sex with his girlfriend and he would watch and film and direct and jerk off as well as a whole bunch of other super dark shit. Now let's, let's get into the juicy part right here. The hip hop agenda. Um, basically what happens is um, the hip hop agenda is an agenda to move drugs all over the United States. They move, you need to report the DEA. They, they move all the dope. Okay, all the dope on private jets, which don't get screened by, by, uh... By customs? By, by DEA. By DEA. Okay. Inside the United States. Okay, this they, they move what's called high-grade powder MDMA. They move cocaine, and they move cr uh, liquid cocaine in their bottles, too. Okay, so they put the liquid cocaine in the bottles, and they move. I've seen the liquid cocaine. I've tried it myself. I haven't sex with Diddy and Cassie, okay? 
it's not good. He drinks it all the time. All right, he calls it cheap juice. Let's well, stick with cocaine. All right. Um, how do I know there's a conspiracy against Trump? Because it's in the Illuminati card deck. Fuck yeah, Holly Berry. Build that wheel up. Get okay, away some stickers tonight. we're about to go into the Illuminati card deck and all sorts of other things. That's for another video. And yes, we're going to have a disclaimer about the amount of tinfoil required for this in just a second. Like, it is absolutely insane, right? Like, I mean, and again, take this all, the, however the fuck you want, okay? Like, dig deeper is what I would say. I would say take some clues and then do your own fucking due diligence and find out what the hell's going on. I've been doing that on a lot of crazy shit and been having my mind fucking blown, okay? But Diddy, and again, a lot of these fucking elite fuck faces are about to... Dude, again, keep an eye on Diddy not existing any fucking more or not making it out of this jail because the names that he has to know. But first, bro. Sigma Pi Phi, or the Black Boule, is bro. the oldest black fraternity in the United States. And this is its symbol. And it's a real thing. And it used to be kind of a secret society. And Dude, now it's like drinking fucking cocaine, like some kind of liquid fucking cocaine. A public fraternity all across know. the U.S. And that symbol looks an awful lot like LeBron's Like, it gets pretty deck. wild with some of the symbolism and stuff here. Black Boulet deserves a whole other video, as does LeBron James. But this this photo circulating, I know people have seen this fucking photo circulating. Fucking LeBron James looking like Fifi. All right, the fucking maid, bro. What the fuck, dude? But y'all remember Juice World? This one's crazy. Who? Hold on, this one's fucking crazy. Like, the deaths surrounding Diddy are insane who died suddenly of a heart attack during a police raid on his plane where they found 41 vacuum sealed bags of marijuana died of a heart attack during the raid kind of weird he was 21 years old at the time and there are many instances of people getting caught smuggling drugs on private planes all of these guys apparently did not have the protection of the rap industry or the black boule or whoever i'm serious tons of different instances but it gets even more interesting when you look at what rappers own private jets. We'll skip to number two, Diddy, whose plane is renowned for its intercontinental range. But number one is Jay-Z, and it was a gift from Bay, meaning probably a tax write-off because they're pretty smart business people. Then you got Drake, who aside from a Russian oligarch, Saudi prince Al-Walid bin Talal, at least formerly before they confiscated it, whole other Vegas shooting rabbit hole, um, Drake's plane is one of the five largest private jets in the world at the time, in 2023. Lil Wayne, Rick Ross, who is mentioned in this interview directly, 50 Cent, and Travis Scott. There's probably more. That's just who was in that one article. And speaking of liquid cocaine, Ciroc Vodka and De Leon Tequila are mentioned multiple times in the original lawsuit, and they had partnerships directly with Diddy. But... It's hard to tell what of this guy's testimony is him knowing things from firsthand knowledge versus him self-admittedly just doing a whole bunch of internet research and piecing things together and deciding to save the world by warning Donald Trump about a plot to kill him by his cousins, all the other presidents, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. And if you're a real conspiracy nut, you might be like, yeah, dude. And if you're not, you might be like, yeah, this guy's fucking crazy. And you might fall somewhere in the middle. I'm somewhere in the okay. middle. <laughs> That's where but I'm at, bro. pretty fun to think about. It's pretty interesting. So, yeah, more coming soon. Dude. The following it's is a fucking crazy, dude, all the shit that's happening. Let's keep going a little bit. We're going to dig in a little bit here. See what some cat was saying, huh? Some cat Williams up in this motherfucker. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell. And Yo, that's a sound clip coming up soon. Big dick deviants, son. What? Well, let me tell you something, brother. 2024 is up for all hey, of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. TG Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. I need to have no one of these. Amen, yeah. amen. Gee. <laughs> uh, I kind of <clears throat> get on here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> After that, I don't really kind of know where to go. Let me one more time. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm. I got to watch right. this, boy. We good now? 
Because the people want to know, well, why would he get blackballed? Yeah, oh, because, I was ask because, that. because in 30 years, I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing. You will tell it. No, somebody come to tell me. Okay. I gather that. I value that. I'll pay for that. Come, tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know, and they all know it. Oh, my God, dude. It sounds like he's trying to get fucking murked. Like, has someone checked on Cat Williams recently? Is Cat Williams doing okay? Like, holy shit, bro. I'm going to turn down $50 million. Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. Oh, See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why here, I just say I'm so freely. I need another one. You here, get your number two. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Come on. Because early on, you was accusing me of being. Cat, man. Cat. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, but you know, the, the, some of these people. Martin tried to put me in my first dress. Oh shit! I just had some fucking Martin clips up in here. Oh shit! Just chilling. Oh shit! Hold up! Hold up! Oh Hold shit! Up. Son. No! Uh uh! Son of a bitch! When he had to go on his hiatus, he tell me, "Cat, when I come back, I need Listen. you. You my young partner. You my brother in comedy. When I come back, just promise me that my next movie it'll be me and you. We gonna do it together." We're going to do some buddy cop shit. I said, Martin, you got my motherfucking word, my nigga. Go do what you got to do. When you come back, I'm in your movie. Don't trip. I don't need to see the script or nothing. You know, we get in that office and this fool pull out Big Mama's house, too. 